Hi, Ian. Hi, Bob. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Let me introduce us. I'm Robert Wright of Blogging Heads TV. This is an episode of Worldwise. You are Ian Bateson, an American journalist in Moscow, um, and you have written for some Russian publications. You're currently placed at the Moscow Times, and you are an Alpha Fellow this year, which I that that doesn't mean you're like the Alpha Male in Russia, right? That would be Putin still. That's not yeah. It's something else. It's something else. What is an Alpha Fellow? Uh, the Alpha Fellowship is a program that was started by Alpha Bank to bring young specialists from uh, the United Kingdom and the U.S. to Russia for a year to, to learn more about Russia, to strengthen their Russian skills, and to do placements with companies here. So I'm doing that for journalism, but uh, we have people with legal backgrounds, with financial backgrounds, with backgrounds in NGOs. Okay. Well, sounds good. Um, now... We wanted to talk mainly about the gay rights issue in Russia, which has gotten a lot of attention lately. And I don't quite understand why so much of it has come lately, because it's it's the controversy is about a law that was passed in June, right? Yes, that's correct. And what what did the law say? Uh, well, I mean, there the law we're talking about is the anti-homosexual propaganda laws. So those that started on a regional level and had kind of grown over, I think, the past six years or so, they started to get a little press when they were passed in the St. Petersburg region, and they got a lot more press um, when they were when it was passed on the national level. Basically, they had the first reading where um, I think all the deputies, except for one, who then later claimed he'd accidentally voted against it, everyone else voted for it. Um, and that was when I think a lot of the media attention started to focus on it. Uh, and then it was passed, I think, unanimously in the second reading and then signed by Putin. Okay. okay, now, so it's a law against, quote, propaganda about homosexuality. Homosexuality is actually not illegal in Russia, right? That's correct. So in the Soviet Union, um, uh, sodomy, uh, so sex between men, was uh, was a crime. It was in the criminal code. And we haven't gone back to that. That was undone in the early 90s. This is particularly talking about uh, minors. So people believe the age of the majority is still 18. So it's talking about um, propagating basically the gay lifestyle with, uh, with minors. Mm-hmm. Um, and what is the, I mean, how broadly could that be interpreted and how broadly has it been interpreted? I mean, I, uh, ha, first of all, has anyone been, been arrested for violating the law and, uh, so far? Uh, I don't know of any Russians who've been fined, um, or held for it. The only case I can really remember is they had, uh, I think four, uh, Dutch nationals who I think were in Murmansk on um, tourist visas, and they were doing some filming for um, a documentary on gay rights. And they were arrested, uh, or at least held on the charge, and then they were deported. So that's the only case I know of. The biggest issue is no one really knows how this will be enforced. Um, what's kind of said is in its broadest uh, possible, the broadest possible understanding of the law is that anything uh, positive about uh, gay people would not be legal. There were people uh, using the regional version of the law that they had in St. Petersburg. There was a group that um, tried to sue Madonna for uh, several million dollars for saying at a concert in St. Petersburg that everyone was created equal. E uh, sorry, everyone was created equal, and that Russians should be tolerant of their gay brothers and sisters. But now they weren't able to prove. Hmm? Go ahead. Uh, I was just okay, going to say, they, <laughs> um, they weren't able to prove that there are any minors at the concert. Uh, so in that case, that was one of the reasons why, why it didn't go ahead when the case was thrown out. Okay. There are people who say that they have lost their jobs for coming out as gay, right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, you have, um, for people who work in... The public sphere, you know, for teachers, if something like that became known, or for professors, they would certainly be in danger. Um, you know, you've also had a high-profile case of um, a Russian anchor who, after the brutal murder of a 22-year-old earlier this year in southern Russia, uh, came out over the air. And he uttered himself. This was, this, was, this, was a, 
this was a 22-year-old gay man, right? It was kind of, in some ways, comparable to the Matthew Shepard case in America, I guess. Yes. I mean, the, the case, uh, this kind of jarring event for many people, um, his name was Vlad. He lived in southern Russia. He was 22. Um, and then he ended up being attacked by other young men who um, had uh, sodomized him with you know, two and a half bottles before setting him on fire and bashing his face in uh, with the rock. So that was uh, a very strong, um, a strong image, something that they got some press and um, you know, that made some people want to be more active, to be sure. Okay, so then after that, this one guy did something uh, by way of protest or something and, and got in trouble for it? Uh, Anton, yeah. Um, basically, he had come out on his talk show and had you know, shared with his audience that, that he was gay. Um, had invited other gay people onto the show, uh, basically trying to, uh, to educate people to give something positive to talk about events. And uh, the way he was talking about it in particular was that he felt uh, pushed to do this um, because of events, just because of the way the climate was changing and how things were, were developing. Uh, so to try and do something positive. I mean, the way a lot of gay people in Russia live they can be successful in their fields. They can do things, um, you know, like everyone else. They can be wealthy. They can be successful. But it kind of hinges on them um, keeping their sexuality private. That it's not a commonly known fact. Um, and if it does become known, then that that's a liability. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Is it possible to compare this to like an earlier era in the United States? I mean, is is this kind of roughly like what the status of gay rights was in the United States in the mid '60s or something? Have you thought about that at all? Um, it's a bit hard, and it can be. It's a bit tricky in Russia because obviously Russia is more conservative than Western countries are. It doesn't have a long history of immigration. It doesn't have much of a history with people being publicly out, and that lends itself to talking about Russia being X number of years behind. Um, I unfortunately I don't have the best knowledge of uh, 1960s gay rights in the U.S. Obviously, well, you know, it wasn't, uh, yeah. I'll say, I mean, not, not many people were out, and it wasn't talked about. I mean, as, as, a, yeah. as a kid, I didn't, you know, hear, you didn't, you didn't hear about, I'll tell you, you didn't, you didn't hear anything that would have violated the Russian propaganda law, I guess you might say. I mean, you didn't right. hear about it on TV. I, I don't, I, I guess probably you, you could have read about it in some newspapers or something, but it was, um, and I'm talking mid, and I think then, then mid 60s, then things start, start changing quite a bit, but, uh, mm. you know, it was pretty, it was pretty repressive. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say because, again, um, you don't have any anti-sodomy laws on the books, which you did in the U.S. at the time. Um, I think the biggest issue here, it's less about the concrete laws than it is about the changing environment. Because with the laws, no one's really sure how they're going to be enforced just yet. That means you have some publications now, like... Uh, I forget if it was Interfax, but one of the state-run Russian media outlets that every time they run a story about um, any sort of a gay issue, uh, you know, talking about the Olympics controversy, all of that, now they put a warning at the top of the article that it's not appropriate for people who are under 18 because they're concerned that they would be fined uh, for writing about gay issues at all. Uh, so now they put that warning on top. But that's not across the board, and that's not something explicitly said in the law either. Okay. Um, how much of this is religious? I read that the uh, the leader of the um, Russian Orthodox Church called same-sex marriage, quote, a very dangerous sign of the apocalypse. Right. <laughs> um, not, not, not just an ordinary sign of the apocalypse, you know, but a very, a very dangerous one. Um, what uh, is, is, is it largely religiously based or are there a lot of basically secular people who for, who for non-religious reasons are very anti-gay, or can you can you tell? I mean, it's a little hard to say. Some of it goes in, hand in hand. Obviously, there's been a big resurgence in religion uh, in the former Soviet Union since the collapse of mm -hmm. communism. That being said, you know, uh, 
all the kind of surveys they do, everything they look at, the just kind of fact at the end of the day is um, most Russians don't like gay people that much. I mean, I think, uh, depending on the study you look at, it can be about 80 to 90 percent. Um, the kind of tolerance is tolerance in the sense that if you, you know, if you're going to have sex with people and you're going to do it in the privacy of your own home and you're not going to kiss people on the street and you're not going to demonstrate, um, then, you know, that, that's something we can tolerate. But people, what people are very much not supportive is any sort of public space for homosexuality, any sort of activism, um, or attempt to create, um, not a broader platform, but, um, uh, you know, just active organizations, something beyond uh, clubs or bathhouses or things like that. Mm -hmm. Has Putin himself talked much about this and, and made it uh, <clears throat> made it more of an issue than it inherently was by virtue of the passage of the legislation? I don't. Uh, I wouldn't say Putin has talked that much about it directly. What uh, probably the quote that I've seen most from him is him just saying that there are no issues with gay rights in Russia and that um, gay rights are protected and have the same rights as everyone else. The people kind of driving it, you have uh, one member of the Russian Duma, uh, Elena Mazulina, who is, uh, I forget what her exact title, but something like chairperson for the Committee of uh, for Family, Women, and Children. So she was a big supporter of the uh, adoption ban that came through. She's a big supporter of the anti-gay propaganda law. Um, she's a big supporter for um, uh, banning abortion again in Russia. I, I don't know how she identifies religiously. I'm fairly certain she she would identify as Orthodox, but I don't know. Uh, it's, it can be a little hard to say in Russia whether how actively people practice. Um, there's kind of a movement after the collapse of the Soviet Union for people to say they're Orthodox because they're Russian and that's what it went to, what kind of went along with, but it doesn't necessarily mean that people go to church all the time or that their values are necessarily consistent with those of the church. And is this caught up with a kind of anti-Western sentiment, which I know is pretty considerable in Russia and is itself sometimes exploited by Putin? I mean, is, is, is that... Part of the, the talking the talking points of, of the anti-gay people is that this is a corrupting uh, Western import and maybe American import or something. Yeah, um, I'm trying to. I can't remember if it's made it into any official speeches, but I, I would say for a lot of people. And keep in mind, this is a very populist topic. It started off in regions and then kind of spread, then it was recognized that it was popular, and then got the United Russia uh, seal of approval, and then just had, you know, um, almost everyone in the parliament voting for it. Um, you, I had done an interview with Kevin Moss, who's a professor of Russian at Middlebury College, and he, his argument um, was that uh, a lot of the kind of the liberalization, the emergence of gays in the 1990s had to do with a lot of the westernization, the opening, the failure of the Yeltsin years, and, and all of those sort of things. And that was really the first time a lot of Russians became aware that there, there were gay people around them at all. I mean, there was uh, a lot of homophobia in the Soviet Union, but I don't think it was people, I don't think people really thought they were around gay people or they knew them. They knew that they were these people. They thought there was something wrong with them, but at the same time, probably that they're isolated um, and farther, farther away, just kind of removed, where I don't think people have that perception anymore. There's an awareness that, that there are gay people and they are in the cities um, and that is associated again with the 90s time. People really do ask, why Why has this all emerged in the 90s? Obviously, it must be the opening of the West. It's the Westernization that's changed it. That's what's brought it in. And none of this existed in the Soviet Union. Ah, I see. So, so it isn't just, they're not just claiming that the gay rights movement kind of is coming from the West, because after all, there may be some, some truth to that, right? But, but they're claiming that uh, there weren't gay people in, in Russia until the opening to the West. That's that's kind of the line. I mean, I wouldn't say that they're saying, you know, there had never been uh, a gay person in Russia ever <laughs> before communism right. collapsed. But, um, you know, keep in mind in the Soviet Union, a lot of the talk about uh, homosexuality was talk about decadence, is talk about, again, about something that came in from the West and so it was a corruption that way. So, yes, there is an association that, um, the spread of homosexuality, the prominence of homosexuality is, uh, is an import, is something that came in like, um, 
you know, and related to AIDS or other things that really um, showed up for the first time in the 90s and aren't listening particularly well. Um, and then, you know, there is a lot of anti-Western populism, a uh, desire to kind of respond against that, So it, it, which uh, is coming again on the part of United Russia and Putin. So there are things that fall, fall in line with that. And then again, the 90s are not... Um, are not a time remembered particularly well by Russians. There was a lot of instability, a lot of frustration, and also a weaker Russia, which for um, many Russians who tend to be proud of their country is um, is just difficult. But in any event, there, there have been more gay Russians coming out since the 1990s. So, I mean, it is, it is actually a more conspicuous, homosexuality is a more conspicuous phenomenon there. Well, sure. I mean, you have people who are trying to have their first, uh, you know, pride marches, um, who get out there, who protest, who are active, and you, you have, you know, LGBT organizations, which you couldn't have had in the Soviet Union. Uh, and again, I think you're right. I mean, that is an effect of the influence for the West. When you had a lot of American journalists who came over in the early 90s who talked to gay and lesbian and bi and transsexual individuals, um, they were kind of confronted with the fact that most of these people didn't have those identities, that... Um, yes, they had people, had sex with people who were the same sex or they lived with them, but they didn't construe it as an identity in the same way um, that they did in the West. They, some would say, oh, you know, that's what I do in the bedroom. Why should that affect anything else? Now, I mean, obviously, uh, there's a question whether or not that's internalized homophobia or not. Um, but obviously, as time has gone by, Russians don't live in a vacuum, and that includes LGBT Russians. They can read the same periodicals as everyone else. They can read it in the internet. They can see the films. They know what's going on other places. They have more opportunities to travel. Um, and, of course, uh, many of them have a desire for similar rights. And seeing kind of the progress that was made in the U.S., in Western Europe, that was through, through marches, through activism, through... Uh, kind of a public presence um, that is a path some have tried to pursue. Uh, the problem is that's generally not seen very well by the Russian government, and not just for the LGBT community. Any sort of structure like that, or anyone trying to grab public space, is seen as a threat by the government. Um, and that is very, it's very hard to get far in Russia if you're going to be confrontation, confrontational and trying to seek rights. Mm -hmm. Um so the, uh, the, the, the conservative, the anti-gay forces look around and see things are getting worse. They think civilization is falling apart. They, they think they see signs of that. Um, much of it comes from the West. But meanwhile, gay people in reaction to this perception, I guess partly, are, are concerned that things are going, that, that the atmosphere is going to get more repressive in effect than it was even before the 90s. Is that right? Yeah, I think the biggest question now is where are things going? Um, the the kind of talk and discussion now, there, there's a lot of concern about the law, but again, it's not the actual... Um, it's not the case now that the law is being enforced really aggressively. It's not the fact that LGBT activists or organizations are you know, being fined out of existence or doing all that. All of the concern is about what will happen in the future um, and so, I mean, that's the tricky part, and it's the question of where does it go from here? Because, again, this is a very popular law. Um, it's garnered a lot of criticism in, in the West, in Western Europe, in the U.S., in Canada, and there, but it's nowhere near as controversial in Russia itself. And given that sort of climate, and given the fact that it's successful populism, where in supporting these laws, um, Putin, his party, can be can be on the side of the people, which they're not necessarily in other areas. The question is, where will it continue? I mean, there's a bill that I know Masha Gessen has talked about a lot, where um, if it were passed into a law, it would allow the government to seize the children of um, gay and lesbian families and put them into orphanages and foster homes. Um, now, I mean, obviously you can ask kind of the question about how would they know that? How would they know where these families are? Um, who would be seeking all of that? But of course, that's very, very frightening for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, so there are these, there's discussion in, in the West about doing things to pressure Russia to, I, I guess, change the law, right? There's discussion of boycotting the uh, 2014 Winter Olympics, which are scheduled to be in Russia. Um, mm -hmm. There's some 
inquiry by FIFA, the world, the body that governs world soccer, uh, with respect to the 2018 World Cup, which is also um, scheduled to be uh, in Russia. Um, and then apparently there's there's an actual boycott of Russian vodka in gay bars in, in the West, I guess. Um, is any of this uh, having any effect? Is it being discussed? Is it being felt? I mean, uh, in the Russian media, you can, of course, read about all of it. They talk about um, the Russian vodka ban. But I can't say I've heard any really large statements by major politicians um, responding to the claims. I think part of that is the fact that Russia is still negotiating with the International Olympic Committee. Um, so the International Olympic Committee is calling it um, quiet diplomacy. Um, so I think they're, they're all aware that there's an issue and they're attempting to see where, where it can be resolved. I mean, I don't, I don't know how, it's a little difficult to say how seriously Russia takes the boycotts at this point. Um, the, the vodka boycott, I would say is probably more symbolic. I mean, obviously it gets complicated when you're boycotting Stolichna, which, you know, had, I think it's distilled in Latvia and they had their corporate base in Luxembourg or somewhere else. They still have, um, a lot of plants and workers in Russia, but it's not oil and gas. It's not, you know, the big contributor to the Russian budget. It's not an economic threat to Russia in any way, shape or form. Um, in terms of the Olympic boycott, and you, you have people that are supporting it, certainly getting uh, talked about a lot on social networks and all of that, but you don't have any countries that are boycotting it. I haven't heard about any athletes who opted to do that either. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously it's going to be a touchy issue for Russia, which, uh, as in the form of the Soviet Union, the last time they held the Olympics in 1980, there was quite a large boycott, and that was quite mm -hmm. embarrassing for Russia. Although they did get a lot of gold medals as a result. <laughs> um, yeah, when people don't come, it's always a little easier, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, uh, okay, so, um, no, uh, but but it is, it, it, it is still be very much a live issue in Russia. It feels like one, the way it has felt like one, I would say, over the past week here in the United States, getting a lot of play here. Absolutely. I mean, what I found most interesting is probably the process that has motivated a lot of the discussion and interest in the U.S. And I think a lot of that has come from the Internet and from people sharing links on Facebook, so on and so forth. I mean, I think BuzzFeed had a piece called you know, something like 36 uh, pictures from Russia that you have to see, and it was all about you know, people attacking LGBT protests, so on and so forth. Mm. And in the time since then, you have um, these organizations in Russia. Um, one is called Occupy Pedophilia, and one is called um, Occupy Gentrophilia. I think that's the name. So the reverse of that, people um, who don't love children but love old people. And these were groups founded by neo-Nazis, uh, who have their own YouTube channels, who have thousands of followers, and who will trick um, uh, gay men into dates and then uh, torture, embarrass them, take their phones, uh, out them to their bosses, friends, family, and colleagues. Mm. And because of the viral form of this, that they the YouTube the videos were on YouTube, there are images there. I would say that was the second wave that has really driven a lot of the shock and horror and the calls for for these sort of things. Um, Russia has only very slowly, so starting this month, started to respond to those. There's um, a Russian senator named Konstantin Lobudin, uh, who's the first to publicly condemn um, Occupy Gentrophilia, uh, I think, um, which uh, is probably a little easier to target as a Russian politician because they specifically target um, boys who are, you know, 14, 15, 16. Um, they trick them into dates where they think they're meeting someone. Um, they get them to admit, uh, and there are a lot of kind of segments cut out of these videos, but they get them to admit that they wanted to prostitute themselves um, and all these other kind of terrible things. So this senator just this month called for an investigation. And he's the first person to talk about it. I mean, the, the trouble is these videos do a lot of damage to Russia's image. Um, but unfortunately, again, on the Russian side, Russians don't see them that badly. Uh, in the sense that uh, gay and pedophile are often considered to be synonymous. Um, so uh, using that sort of a system, many people don't understand why the West wants to protect 
the uh, pedophiles so much, uh, you know, which the West is really talking about LGBT community, but a lot of Russians understand that as um, as pedophiles. There are people who said they consider something like ninety percent of homosexuals to be to be pedophiles, and because there people will watch this as recreation. There is a Russian state. Um, channel where for a program they followed uh, one of these neo-Nazis groups, they call it when they go on safari, um, when they have, uh, so Occupy Pedophilia, they have a 16-year-old um, who will be going on these dates, uh, allegedly meeting gay men, and then these larger, older neo-Nazis will surround him and interrogate him, and it kind of goes from there. Um, and th that scene is more popular. It's seen as, okay, pedophilia is wrong. It's good that we have these people going after it because the state isn't intervening. They're not being active with that. Um, and so that, that's harder to step in. With the, this other group that specifically targets um, you know, legal minors, uh, that, that's a little easier because people, I would say, you know, from what I've kind of read and from talking to people, people don't consider people in their teens to really be formed in their sexuality. So that's why theoretically you can propagandize to them, right? That people are malleable when they're under 18. Um, they're not fully formed. They could, you know, somehow be made gay or straight or whatever else. So then that group is um, seen a bit better. So that, that is the particular case where they've called for intervention. There have been some smaller stuff with the other groups where they've called people in, but from everything that I've heard, um, that's largely symbolic that they'll do an investigation, but it, the charges aren't serious enough uh, to prosecute. Speci specifically in that group, it's hard because the, the perpetrators are themselves minors. Um, so they're harder to charge under uh, these laws, which are meant to protect the members. And this one senator um, who has distinguished himself from apparently all other senators in taking a stand, at least against some forms uh, of this um, kind of uh, persecution, is he, uh, what gives him the political space to do that? I mean, I know you said that he chose a particularly kind of easy target, but is he from a, a particularly cosmopolitan part of Russia or something? No, um, I mean, the thing is, he's not taking direct action himself. What he's done is he's written a complaint to the um, investigating committee and to the prosecutor general to, to investigate and look at this. So, I mean, he's not trying to pass a law. He's not investigating it himself. He's just said, you know, this, this isn't good. Um, you can, it's really bad what they're doing to these kids. It needs to be looked into because if we don't do that, things will just get worse. I mean, he's a United Russia deputy. He's from the government. I think he's actually, he's from Arkhangelsk, if I remember correctly. So the senators are sent from their regions and, and they're not dire directly elected. Um, I mean, it could be the case, uh, and again, I don't know, but it could be the case that he was sort of tapped to do some PR control. Um, you know, and that let's have an investigation, let's have someone finally make a statement publicly criticizing uh, these organizations. And he's certainly the highest profile person to do that and uh, the only person that I've seen. Um, but he's not, he's not taking direct action. And, and again, it was just this one complaint that he's written. that got a little bit of coverage, but, but nothing huge. Okay. Well, thank you. This has, been, uh, this has been very enlightening for me. I can't let you go without asking. I know you, I know you haven't been working the Edward Snowden case a lot, but um, it's such a it's such a big thing here in 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 America and and lately there was just yesterday I think there was this thing about him seeming to distance himself from his father who was was reportedly headed over there to help um, is that is that still a very live uh, issue there? I mean, I know it is for some people for the State Department um, absolutely because they're they're kind of dealing with that. And I'm sure for the Russian officials, too. Uh, it's something Russians on the ground that they're aware of. They know that they're here. They crack that he's here. They crack jokes about it. Um, but at the same time, you know, Russia isn't a country that um, really prides itself or bases its identity on kind of freedom of speech or, or whistleblowing. I mean, everything he did, if uh, a similar person were to do it in Russia, it would be quite swiftly and severely punished. Um, so it's hardly as if Russians are, are shocked by all of that. I mean, there's interesting novelty, there's certainly curiosity, 
concerning um, who this person is, where he is, what's going on, and a lot of the reactions from the U.S. Um, are understood as tit-for-tat responses to, uh, to Snowden being here. So when um, Obama had canceled his summit with Putin, which had to do with a lot of reasons, one of which um, did include Snowden, um, there was one, one Russian newspaper uh, columnist who had said, oh, Obama doesn't actually care that much about the gays. Um, he's just using that because we took in Snowden. So he's supporting uh, gays, uh, which is a difficult issue for Russia, because we took in Snowden, which is a difficult issue for the U.S., which is a very so this, this, Soviet and Russian that, way of understanding things. That, that was a reference to actual the remarks Obama had made about the gay rights situation in Russia. I mean, I know he said something on the Jay Leno show. I don't know what else he said. Yeah, I think it was mainly that. I mean, uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of the message gets kind of muddled. People understood that the summit was uh, was canceled, um, and some people focused it more on the Snowden issue, uh, which is what I think uh, Obama focused on, focused on more when he actually pulled it off. But I believe it was the night before that he went on the Jay Leno show. Um, you know, I talked about his very serious concern uh, for LGBT issues in Russia. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, listen, um, thanks again, Ian. Enjoy your, uh, <clears throat> enjoy your time as an Alpha Fellow. Uh, Thank you very and, much. And, and maybe down the road you can come back and talk to us again. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Okay. Bye-bye.